In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And And with your spirit. I bid all of you a warm welcome today on this 27th of December, this Sunday after Christmas already. This Sunday after Christmas is known as Holy Family Sunday. The Church honors the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. We celebrate the fact that God brings us into this world, into a community of people, uh, relationships of love, so that we may be nurtured and that we can grow stronger in our lives as we live our lives in this world. And we are thankful to God for our families and today the Holy Family, which is a great example to us. Let us now come before God with humble hearts, asking him now to grant us mercy and forgiveness so that we may worthily celebrate the mysteries of this Eucharist. I confess to to Almighty God God, and to to you, my brothers brothers and sisters, sisters, that I have have greatly greatly sinned sinned in my my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done done, and in what I have failed failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my my most most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. 
O God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity, and so in the joys of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children, and when he prays, is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fail, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten, firmly planted against the debt of your sins, a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. All the ends of the earth have seen the power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, 
Put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if one has a grievance against another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these, put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body, and be thankful Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands, as is proper in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and avoid any bitterness toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, so they may not become discouraged. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the rise and the fall of many in Israel, and to be a sign that would be contradicted, and you yourself will, a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, 
and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that all of you had a a very nice and blessed Christmas, a wonderful celebration of Christmas. It's already two days ago how quickly time goes by. And in the church, though, we continue to celebrate Christmas after Christmas. I know in the secular world, everything gets ready, and we're always in that, that anticipation mode, and we celebrate our holidays before, and once the day comes, it's like, it's over with. But in the church, it's not so. We begin the celebration of any holiday on that day and allow it to flow out afterwards, such as Christmas. We begin the celebration of Christmas in the church on an actual Christmas day, on the, in the evening of the 24th. And we celebrate Christmas for an entire week, which is called the octave of Christmas, eight days. And then the uh, season continues on for a couple more weeks until the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord, which this season is going to be January 10th. But here we are now on the third day of Christmas. And if you uh, are familiar with the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, because there are 12 days that traditionally from, from December 21st till January 5th, the third day of Christmas, do you know what the third gift is on the third day? Three French hens, right? But the church gives us not three French hens, but gives us three members of the Holy Family. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Today, the church celebrates with great joy that little family that that God produced by bringing his son into the world. And he designed it to be that way because every single person comes into this world in a ready-made community of people. The father, a mother, brothers and sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins. I mean, that, that That family can be as small as it can be or can be as large as it can be, but nonetheless, it's still a community of people in which we are brought into this world because we need the support and we need the love of those people around us to help us to grow and develop and to live our lives. And the Savior of the world was no exception to that. He came into this world as a tiny little infant, and he needed the protection, the support of a family a mother and father, to be brought into this world and to live his life as one of us. And so God chose Mary and chose Joseph to be also the the protector of the Holy Family. And today we honor them because they are an example to us of of the importance of of family life and, and how God designed all this for our good. Today, we hear in the, in the scripture passages some, some very important words. One of the, the um, words of St. Paul to the Colossians, when I, I hear that, uh, those words where it says that um, husbands, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, where, where um, husbands love your wives, wives be subordinate to your husbands. I always like when that comes up because it makes me smile because I can just feel the tension that the women are feeling, be subordinate to your husbands. Well, that's because it shows how sometimes we we very wrongly interpret the scriptures. We don't understand the scriptures. We we look at things in the way we might do in an earthly way, in a human fashion. And I guess, well, we can't blame it because that's how we think. But that's another call to help us raise our hearts and our minds to God's thinking. Because like Jesus said once to St. Peter, you think as man thinks, not as God thinks. And when we read the scriptures, we have to remember that this is God speaking to us. 
So wives, be subordinate to your husbands. Husbands, love your wives. Well, it just means that, that if, for instance, in a family, if the f- man or the husband is supposed to be the head of the family, then the wife, the mother, is the heart of the family. And when you look at both of those, the heart and the head, and you say, which one of those two is more important? You can't answer that question because they are both equally important, right? In the, in the book of Genesis, when God created Eve, he didn't take the part of a man's head or, or his foot. What did he take? The rib, the side, to form the partner for the man. And so man and woman are supposed to be equal partners. St. Paul goes after the men to learn to love their wives. He tells them, husbands, love your wives. He doesn't say that to women because women, just by their very nature, are more loving and nurturing. And it's within them. Men, not so much. And that's a harder lesson for us men to learn. But St. Paul is reminding us of that. And love is the most important lesson of all what Jesus said. The greatest commandment of all is to love God and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And so love is, of course, the more powerful thing and the most powerful lesson. And so we can't get caught up with all these, all these human hang-ups that we have in thinking that, that women are being called to be subordinate or second-class citizens. That's not what St. Paul is telling us. He's trying to let us rise up to the occasion, to rise up to the mind in thinking of God. And God always, always has what's best for us in his heart because it helps us to be the best that we can be individually and collectively as, as, as human beings. I always say that God created us in his image and he wanted us to be like him. And so we reflect God in our lives individually, but we remember that God is one in three persons, right? Father, Son, and Spirit. And so God exists in a community of persons that are bound by this extraordinary and powerful bond of love. We are individuals, but we are also our families. We are one within our families as well. And so we are not just by ourselves. We are, we are a community of people. And we reflect that unity that God has in the persons of the Trinity when we reflect him in our families as well. So this Holy Family Sunday is a reminder to us that God has given us an extraordinary gift. And as we celebrate this Christmas season, which brings family and friends together, people who care about each other, who love one another, they come together to share time and to celebrate this this festive and wonderful season, this great gift that, that God gave to us. It is a time to remember the gift of our families. Let us pray for our families and for one another so that we always can be the best that we can be and let us look to the Holy Family for the example that God himself has set for us to follow. You know, Christmas was just a couple of days ago and, and, um, and a lot of people get visits by um, Santa Claus, right? I was kind of a little bit sad this year because Santa Claus didn't quite make it to my house and I was really wondering why, but then I found out. And so I'll show you why he didn't make it. Just take a look. Join with me now as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To God, the loving Father of the whole human family, let us pray in trust and love. For the Church, that we treat our sisters and brothers with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience as we strive to build God's kingdom throughout the entire human family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, that they may respect the bond of individual families as well as foster the unity of the human family across nations and cultures. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all families, especially those who have been affected by the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all parents, that they may exercise patience as they raise their children with love and kindness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For healing and hope for parents who have lost a child. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For members of this community, may they reach out to those without immediate family and offer their love and time and give witness to the bond we share in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayers. For all those who have died, especially Lucio Coronado, Jr., may they be received into the everlasting joy of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for the intentions of the repose of the souls of Ida and Orena Maytoyer, for whom this Mass is offered, and for our own private intentions for which we pause to remember in a moment of silent prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God and Father of all, bless our families with your love. May they turn to you in their joys and sorrows and find in you the source of happiness, unity, and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, May the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, Jesus has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raised up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so, Father, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we now acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George Leo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember Lucio and Ida and Arena and all who have died in your mercy. Father, welcome them into the light of your face 
And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, together let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, Lord, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us now safely offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most holy Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for being here today and celebrating this feast day of the Holy Family on this Sunday after Christmas. Thank you for being with us and praying with us. I hope that all of you had a blessed Christmas indeed and that uh, you are still celebrating and uh, just having a great time during this wonderful season of the year. I thank you also for the support that, that you give to us through the year and you have given us through this year. Uh, because It's because of you that we were able to continue to minister to you and to bring you these masses and to do all that we can. So thank you for your support. We, we so much appreciate it. I'd like to thank our, our, our uh, staff and our volunteers who are here today that are helping us bring this Mass to you. We thank Cheryl, who was our uh, lector today, Mikhail, of course, who mans the cameras, and toward David and Annie here today with us, who was, sell who was singing with us and providing the music for us and lifting us up in spirit. So we thank you very much for that. And um, so on behalf of Father Julian and myself, I'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas season and a very Happy New Year, for we'll be ringing in the New Year 2021 in just a few days. And I, I don't think any of us are going to be sad to see 2020 go. But uh, we have new hope in the new year that the Lord is giving to us because God always brings a, a sunrise into our lives and we always have hope in that. And we do hope that this year 2021 will be a year that will be happy for all of us and healthy for all of us as well. So join us, please, this coming week on New Year's Day. We will be celebrating Mass here, and, uh, oh, excuse me, and we will see you then. So until then, may God bless you, and may you enjoy this Christmas season. The Lord be with you. 
And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be Thank to God. God. Oh, so-